What's up everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we've got Big John's thoughts on Diego versus Kevin Lee in March, Chael Sonnen on Jake Paul, and much more. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel to see more videos just like this. Now let's get into it. Chael Sonnen's theory on why Jake Paul continues to call out contracted UFC fighters instead of pro boxers. Jake Paul has not only had the benefit of being a massive YouTube star when he began boxing, but he's also been able to rack up enough wins and continued to stay in the zeitgeist of pop culture. Uncle Chael Sonnen knows full well what Jake Paul is doing. Everyone notices how Paul has basically only called out pro MMA fighters, specifically those still under contract with the UFC. UFC President Dana White has been steadfast for years in his refusal to let contracted fighters enter any competitions outside of the promotion that involves striking, although grappling events are okay. After his knockout of Tyron Woodley earlier this month, Jake Paul called out Nate Diaz and Jorge Masvidal, both of whom have responded via socials, but who can't really fight outside the UFC at the moment. Now, there have been exceptions on both sides. Dana allowed Conor McGregor to fight Floyd Mayweather a few years ago, and Jake Paul was set to fight Tommy Fury, a pro boxer, before he withdrew due to injury earlier this month. But again, these are exceptions. Sonnen says the reason why Jake Paul keeps calling out contracted UFC fighters in particular is simple, and said as much on his YouTube channel this week. Why does Paul keep doing it? I don't think that you got to put on your uh, Colombo rain jacket to figure this out because he gets a response. It's been very good for business. Boxers don't always respond. Some of them think the greatest response is to brush somebody off. If you brush somebody off, Paul has no reason to call you out. Paul is looking for headlines. He's great at getting them. Uncle Chael goes on to talk more about how, by virtue of MMA fighters responding to callouts, throwing videos and tweets out to Paul, a conversation happens in the online world. Buzz about the conversation happens, people start to chime in, it piques the interest of casuals who might not otherwise be into any combat sports, but are into Jake Paul and the YouTube verse. There's no question that Paul has proven that as long as the buzz and hype is there, the eyeballs will come and this could lead to more money. Young fighters know this. Hell, Sean O'Malley has also navigated his fight career in a great way, cultivating interest in his personality and being able to deliver great victories over well-chosen opponents even without being ranked. So what do you make of Sonnen's statements about Jake Paul? What do you think other fighters can take away from this? And do you believe this is a knock on boxing, given that many fighters in that sport, even though they can knock the daylights out of Paul, are nowhere near as known? Israel Adesanya tells Robert Whittaker that their UFC 271 rematch will be worse than the first time. Israel Adesanya looks incredibly focused for a scheduled rematch against former middleweight champion Robert Whittaker at UFC 271 this coming February. Whittaker has been the number one contender for the title for quite some time, but has taken his time to prepare for a bout that he knows would be a scrap for the ages. The fight has the potential to be fight of the year if we're to believe that Whittaker has made improvements. Whittaker has gone 3-0 since losing to Izzy over two years ago, while Izzy has gone 3-1, his lone loss to Jan Blachowicz earlier this year for the light heavyweight title. But still, Izzy is making all the preparations necessary, both body and mind, for UFC 271. Case in point, Stylebender recently tweeted out a short hype video with a caption that read, Look in my eyes, eat, sleep, train, repeat. It's a plan that can't be beat. This will be worse than the first time. This is clearly a message to Whitaker, whom Adesanya beat back at UFC 243 in October of 2019, which Izzy won by TKO in the third round. At the moment, according to Bet Online, Izzy is a negative 260 betting favorite for the February encounter, while Whitaker is a plus 220 betting underdog. Are you excited for this bout? Do you think it'll be a closer fight than their first encounter? And who do you think will walk away with the undisputed UFC middleweight belt? Don't forget to take a second to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to stay on top of all the latest fight news. Is the scheduled Kevin Lee Diego Sanchez fight fair? Big John McCarthy doesn't think so. Diego Sanchez has had a rough year, but he's going to be heading into a main event clash against Kevin Lee on Eagle FC's North American debut on March 11th in Miami, Florida, in the newly created 165 pound weight class. This will be the first time both athletes will fight outside the UFC, and by then, Diego will be 40 years old and Lee will be 29. 
Lee is only a few years removed from title contention in the UFC lightweight division, while Diego, who has always brought the thunder, is further away from ever having competed at the top of any division. He's a massive fan favorite and is incredibly entertaining to watch in the cage whenever he's there. For these reasons, Big John McCarthy believes this fight truly isn't fair, given the separation in a few areas. In his Weighing In podcast alongside John Thompson, McCarthy shared his thoughts about this fight. I don't think it's a good fight, and I mean, I'll watch it. I'm not saying I won't. I just don't think that the matchup at this point in their careers is a fair matchup. I think, you know, Diego's got to get the fight down. If he gets the fight down, he can he can definitely win the fight. Other than that, he's going to have a hard time. Big John has a lot of respect for Diego's ground game and believes that this could be his path to victory. Still, what do you think? Do you agree with Big John that this is not a fair fight? Or do you just want to watch these two men throw down in a cage? Also, who do you got in this one? Nate Diaz trolls Dustin Poirier, tells him to bring himself back from the dead. The war of words between Dustin Poirier and Nate Diaz has been intensifying ever since DP's submission loss to Charles Oliveira in their lightweight title fight earlier this month at UFC 269. Poirier has stated that he's open to fighting Diaz, while the Cali gangster, who only has one fight left on his UFC contract, is looking to fight in January on the UFC 270 main card. The fight at this point hasn't materialized, and in a since deleted tweet, Diaz posts this towards Poirier. You're not worthy. If you wanted to fight, we would have already. Bring yourself back from the dead. You suck, DP. A fight between these two would be epic, especially considering how both are longtime UFC fighters with a track record for putting on incredible performances. What do you think about this potential matchup? Would you like to see it? And who do you think would win? UFC looking to match up Mackenzie Dern against Tisha Torres. The women's strawweight division is looking ripe for some great matches, and the UFC is already looking ahead to create a collection of bouts that could shake up the division. BJJ phenom Mackenzie Dern will look to get back to her winning ways in a fight against Tisha Torres, which the UFC is aiming to put on for late spring. This is what was posted on Twitter about the fight. Breaking, Mackenzie Dern versus Tisha Torres in the works for late spring 2022 good fight. Dern is coming off a decision loss at the hands of the number 3 ranked strawweight Marina Rodriguez. Dern is still in the top 5 of the division, while Torres, ranked 7th in the division, is riding a 3-fight winning streak. Speaking of Rodriguez, the promotion is also looking to have her fight the number 4 ranked Yan Xiaonan. Confirmation came via Paradigm Sports on Twitter. It's official. Yang Xiaonan will take on Marina Rodriguez in a strawweight bout at UFC 272 in Las Vegas on March 5. Rodriguez is also on a three-fight winning streak all this year in 2021, while Yan is coming off a loss to potential title challenger Carla Esparza. It's certainly looking like the women's strawweight division is stacked, and we can't wait to see these bouts. What do you think about Dern vs. Torres? And what about Rodriguez against Jan Xiaonan? Who you got in those fights? Thanks so much for joining us today and catching up on all things MMA. We want to wish you a happy new year. And what do you make of what's going on in the fight world right now? Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all the latest fight news that's coming at you in the new year. See you next time.